And for the first time, well, for the first time, period, I think we can have a realistic conversation of life without Mike Tomlin. And I guess my question to you guys would be, if this were to end, and let's say it ends like we expect it to, either no playoffs or an immediate loss when they sneak in at 9-8 and eight or 10-7 and because they beat Minshew and Jake Browning. If it were to end, Ron, how would you remember the Mike Tomlin era? What's a fair evaluation of, of it? I like kind of like the way you described it. A lot of great wins, a lot of great moments, uh, but not m- very much recently. I mean, if, you, if you're looking back, you're going if they don't make the playoffs this year, it'll be the fourth time in six years. Uh, if they don't win a playoff game, they haven't won it since seven. I mean, kind of. I'd kind of look at it the way to, I did to some degree to the Neil Huntington, Clint Hurdle era. They they did something I never thought they could do. They won with the Pirates, but it ended poorly, and it was time for them to go. Mm. I would think I'd some I'd be thinking something about that. I would remember the Tomlin era more favorably than unfavorably. Nene, because he added a Super Bowl. Great early success in his career. Tremendous early success in his career, and everything was missed opportunities after that. Missed opportunity after missed opportunity and a lot of mediocrity after that. And it was just years of being in the mix, but never quite being Super Bowl contenders. And that's going to mark a big part of his career here, his coaching tenure here. That's yeah, been the bulk of it, really. I, I agree with both of you. And I, I think uh, Paul Zeiss actually captured this in his column the other day. It's really been the story of two careers, which reminds me of the Steve Peterson ten years yeah, here. He that's was, a good call. He was A plus his first time around, not so much the second time around. Tomlin was unbelievable for the first, what, four years? And then something changed. Got him back to the Super Bowl again. Something changed with that Packers Super Bowl loss. It felt it was just, you know, in retrospect, the end of an era. And I love Mike Tomlin's passion for the game. You know, I love the sideline clips we see of him, his style with players and coaching and his manner of coaching. I think he's been an incredible representative for the city too. But at some point, when you haven't won big games for a long, long... The shelf life mm -hmm. catches up with you, doesn't it? When you haven't won big games for a long, long time, you got to be accountable to that. I would say especially here, but anywhere. I mean, come on now. It's been 13 years since that Packer game, and the Houston Texans have more division titles and playoff wins than the Pittsburgh Steelers. So sometimes things just need to end. You get, we get an A-plus for the first four years, and what, a C-plus, C-minus, C somewhere in the C range for now I the just... last – 12 or 13? I just think of what Brian Billick told us the other day about Bill Walsh saying 10 years is enough Yes, for any coach at any place. Yeah. And that, that one really struck uh, struck with me because I had such great respect for Bill Walsh. 10 years is a long time. Maybe in Tomlin's case, 17, 15. 15 would have been you enough. Know, 17, you know, 17. You know, Belichick, it, it's the same thing's happening with him, right? Um, you know, th- it's time probably for a change. Do you have that Billick quote from yesterday by any chance, Folsey? Because that was a good one. But, yeah, I would remember it fondly yeah, we for sure. That, e- even... We played that because I asked you to find it the other day, and you found it. You had it. Mm-hmm. You should have it in there somewhere. Because I asked him the question about, is it fair to criticize Tomlin? And yeah. he said, yeah, it's fair. Even, in these, even with these Go disappointing ahead. endings, there have been lots of big games, entertaining games. Even last year. I'll tell you, one game that's underrated – I think in recent Steeler history is that is that Raider win because of you know Franco's passing Franco's that week and night. everything that that represented and man that was what a great finish. The one in Baltimore the next week was great. Was great. So even amidst disappointing seasons, in the midst of them, there's been some really fun wins and things like that. But it's it's unimaginable, Ron, that this is going to get better to me. It just it doesn't feel that way. It, it would be unusual for someone to stay in this place this long, go through a playoff wind drought like this, and then suddenly get out on the other side of it and have everything be good. And may not have a quarterback. 
may not may not even have a quarterback. You know, Harbaugh was rejuvenated by Lamar Jackson, right? Yep. Because that was starting to look like it might need to be time. Oh, they when they came here and won, right? Yeah. Wasn't there speculation? He could be gone. I remember it from the um, Josh Dobbs game there in Baltimore. When Dobbs made that throw from the end zone, that day there were stories in Baltimore about, is this the end for Harbaugh? Yep. Do you have the bill quote? I do. Let's take a listen. Sometimes you have to change just for change sake, and you don't want to hear that as a coach. Mike Tomlin's an outstanding coach, and, 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 if, and, if, and if something should happen there, he'll have a job at 10 minutes after he gets fired because um, he is an outstanding coach. Do sometimes you just need that fresh perspective, particularly for a guy, Bill Walsh, again, was a guy that firmly believed that 10 years, Bill Parcells kind of alluded to it as well. You can only last about 10 years before things just, you know, between the fans, the media, and the team, and the message that you have. Now, they've, he's obviously gone well beyond that, as have some others. But, um, yeah, sometimes, you know, John Jim Harbaugh was under fire uh, last a couple of years ago and right on that same cusp with kind of those same numbers. I, I, that one hit me pretty good. That, yeah. It was pretty good coming from him, coming from Bill Walsh. Yeah, I think in this case, 15 would have been the magic number or so. Maybe go out with Ben. But I also think Tomlin has good coaching left in him. I do. I think he yeah. can go somewhere oh, else and go, win. He's going to go somewhere and win a lot of games. If he goes to the Chargers, for instance, yeah. with Herbert, he's got a chance to win pretty quickly, I would think. It just doesn't It, it doesn't have to be this, this horrible, ugly ending. You know, the guy's been an, an unbelievable representative of the city. And he's won tons of games, but he just hasn't won big games. It's been a long time since the Steelers were winning big games. And the biggest of all are playoff games. And now, you know, it's interesting. Billick says 10 years. Right. They've gone seven. If they don't win a playoff game this year, seven without a playoff win. Bill Walsh only coached 10. Vince Lombardi only coached 10. They, they, they're about to go a coaching lifetime without a playoff win. I'm sorry, but you also have to be accountable to that. Right. Well, how about if they don't make the playoffs four times in six years? Yes. That's... Two years in a row, four and six. Is that what it would be, Ron? Yeah. Four and six. Four and six. See, that's the, the misconception as well. At least they get there. Well, maybe not. And also, if they collapse in December again, or they have just a losing record in December again, I went back and looked at it last night. That's the other misconception, is that his teams always get better, and he never loses yeah. one, and all that. Tell us the numbers. 2018, they went 2-3 and three in December. 2019, 2-3. Two 2020, 2-3. Two so the Steelers have a real chance of finishing below 500 down the final stretch of a season. You know, he was defiant. The last he was years. defiant last night. You know, we'll be back. This stings. We'll be back. It's who we are, what we do. At least he didn't say we're going to raise hell in December. Thank goodness. It's who we are. Thank Says who? goodness that he didn't say we're going to raise hell in December. So for the first time, for the very first time, we can actually engage in a realistic conversation about who might be next. We asked Ray Fittipaldo that question earlier today, and this is what he said. Ben Johnson, offensive coordinator with the Lions. I understand the Lions have been up and down, but to me, the way the league is right now, you need an offensive coach, and I really like what he's done with the Lions. They're not a perfect team, but he's done a lot with that offense, and he's done a lot with, I think, what people believe is an average quarterback as well. I don't know if he's going to end up coaching here. He's going to get his name is well out there. He's on everybody's list. It seems like there's going to be a bunch of openings. I'll bet he gets one somewhere. What the kind? prime one to me is the Chargers. Yeah, I mean because of Herbert. You know, Washington's going to be open. It depends what you think of Sam Howe, um, but Herbert is the one that the Chargers and Dan Potash. I'm sure you're listening out there. Well, um, what do you think about here? What kind of uh, profile would this coach have to have? They looking for an offensive guy? Would they be? I do you would think. Th I would think so. I mean, you know, he's one with an offensive guy. It's about offensive football. Yeah. Right. I mean, and if you're the defensive guy background, you better have a hell of an offensive coordinator. That's the thing. You know who I'd be interested in? Who? Steve Wilkes. I thought David Tepper made a horrible mistake 
by getting rid Wasn't of Wasn't he in a- Arizona for a cup of coffee too, right? Yeah. Yep. I was watching a, some clips last night about their Walter Payton nominee, Eric Armstead, and just watching Steve Wilkes and how he operates. I know he's a defensive coordinator, defensive guy. I thought he did a hell of a job with that team last year. Pathetic Panthers team. I'm looking. Well, if you not, hire a guy like that, you better have a hell of a core offensive. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I don't need my offensive, my my head coach to be an offensive guy. I want him to be a CEO and hire the right people around him and let them do their jobs. That's which, that's been that's been which as is, much as anything else. Tomlin's downfall. I was going to say which was one of the knocks against Tomlin. So he would be an, an interesting guy. The guy they face this year, if you are looking for an offensive guy, Bobby Slowick. Houston mm-hmm. from Man, the Shanahan is, is he, tree. Uh, has he risen up the How would you like to take the guy the, the in charge? really quickly. Of C.J. Stroud and put him in charge of whoever you bring in here or pick it. Interesting name. Sounds intriguing to me. Name. Kellen Moore, offensive coordinator. Eh, Chargers, That's the bloom is going off that rose a little bit. Because their offense stinks all of a sudden. Brian Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Eagles, helped develop Jalen Hurts. Has them ranked in the top three in a year of transition for them. But this always goes back to, is it Sirianni? Sirianni gave up the play calling this year. But he's still, okay, I get it, I get it. He's still so much involved in it, though. Sure. Yeah, I, that's a legit question. As it would be with Eric Bieniemy. Sure. Although I like what he's done with uh, with Sam Howell, but but again, for me at least, for me, it's bring bring me in a CEO type, yeah, who who will hire the right people. That's Just surround himself with smart football guys. Yes, I mean Tomlin, innovative. Tomlin obviously is a is a natural leader of men. He is that, but he hasn't hired the right people. That's a big big flaw. That's a demerit. And I think he's also You used to get demerits in school, right? Yeah, I think he's also he's also <coughs> excuse me. Sort of become too much of a control freak at times, I think. With the defense as well. I mean And maybe with the offense, don't turn it over. Don't take a chance. Don't yeah. turn it over. Yeah. Who else is out there? Jim Harbaugh might be. <laughs> I'm not interested in him. But I, that's just I guess more Personal animus, yeah, 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 that yeah, guy wins. Yeah, yeah he, can you imagine Jim against John in the AFC North? Yeah, we that saw guy. him in the Super Bowl. He wins right? games. Then they compete in the Super Bowl, right? right? They did. And Jim could come in here and cheat for the Steelers. That would be unbelievable. He could hire stallions. That's right. What about Harbaugh and Belichick? You'd have the cheatingest team in NFL history, Fulzi. <laughs> Think How the is Michigan? And Steelers so, can so just mi- trade their coaches. Where's Belichick going to end up? San uh, L A. Or Washington, I think. Yeah. Are those considered probably the two prime openings? That's because, what Peter King told us. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, Carolina, do you want to work for that guy? I think they could trade I mean, Tomlin. is Stefanski a p- p- possibility to be fired? If they don't make the playoffs this year? And, possibly. And, 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 and yeah. fail miserably down the stretch? Yeah. Could the Steelers that, that trade Tomlin to Washington? That job's going to be open, maybe. Absolutely, they could. I mean, it— Whenever we say that, it sounds funny. Would yeah. they trade Tomlin? But then you actually look at reality. Got, coaches get traded kind of frequently in the NFL. Sean Payton got traded to the Broncos. I mean, seriously, if they're going to part ways with Tomlin, wouldn't you want them to trade him? Yes. And Belichick, there, I just saw a story out of Boston the other day. You see, st- he just signed a huge contract extension. Don't fire him. Get something for him. Yeah. Somebody wants Bill Belichick, but they still think he's Bill Belichick. Make them trade for him. If it's time to move on, at least try to get some value for him. Makes sense to me. I would trade Tomlin, yeah, to David Tepper in Carolina. That seems to be the logical place. Yeah. I mean, not for him to pick there to go, but for them to try to trade for him because Tepper knows him. Maybe Bryce Young is good. Tomlin can bring Matt Canada with him over there, Ron. (laughs) You think that would be a tough sell to the – Panther <laughs> faithful, the Panther faithful. I'm still hoping I see him on the Gulf of Mexico tomorrow. Hey, Matt, how are you? Good Dri- to see you, Ron. What did we say? Driving his boat sideways? Yeah, I know. Leaving Stopping it. short of the dock. Short of the dock. He gets out and walks. <laughs> Imagine that conversation with David Tepper. Yeah, Mike, we'd love to just turn this whole program over to you. 
You mind if I bring Matt with me? Yes, I do. I mind that very I do much. I mind, actually. Um, Steve Wilkes is an interesting character. I'll tell you that much. Very, very interesting. And then you go out, you get, you know, one of these young, up-and-coming, I don't know, Kyle Shanahan tree guys, Ron, offensive to run your offense. Yes. But then I still think you might need a quarterback. What if they just did that, too? Can you imagine if they just transformed this thing to head coach, CEO, leader guy? Offensive coordinator, riser, up-and-comer. And we're going to go out and get a quarterback. We've seen enough. We made a mistake. Eh, it happens. It doesn't have to crumble the franchise. What did, what did you say about it? Eh, 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 eh. What if they did two out of the three? <laughs> what yes. if they kept Tomlin as the CEO leader guy, got a young, innovative offensive mind as the offensive coordinator, obviously, and drafted a quarterback? Would you be satisfied? More than I am now, I think. But, but, I'm, I'm, but I'm, I think I'm thinking, I think it's time. But like you know, that may, would mean you'd be giving Tomlin an extension, like Ray said. Yeah. Yep. Would you want that? Not. And it would still no. no, 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 no. Let me backtrack with a one-word answer: no, because we were just talking about Shelf this. This and, yeah, and this yeah. offense is an extension of Tomlin's philosophy. Yeah, I, mean, I think this whole mess is is attributed to him. He created it. I just, I don't think he's gonna just abandon this idea that, that this this his philosophy. Yes, of being extremely extremely controlling. So then you go out and you draft a quarterback. I mean, other other teams have made mistakes at quarterback and redone it. The Eagles being a primary example, and Carson Wentz was still good. When they went out and drafted Jalen Hurts. Well, the old Josh Rosen, Kyler Murray in Arizona. You just redo it. You know, it's not like it's Whoops. not like they've made all kinds of great picks with their top three picks over the past five years. So waste another one if you have to and get a quarterback. Get the most important position. Or declare the picket one a waste, I should say, and get yourself a quarterback. Maybe you get a nice pick in the Tomlin trade, Ron. Now that would be something. They're going to be it? headed if, if the fin if this season really falls apart. They're going to end up with a decent pick. If they go eight and nine or seven and ten, it's going to be decent. Decent, yeah. I was looking and at the, that. And there's Man, a bunch I... of quarterbacks out there, right? If you like, if you love one, yeah. Of them. Can we agree that's best case scenario? Well, what that, that they, they just miss? lose out? Of course, best case would have been to lose to Baltimore and Cleveland, and you might be looking at top ten or top five. You know, there's a lot of mediocre teams, so I don't even know if seven, eight wins. Does that even get you in the top 15? I don't know. But there's a lot of quarterbacks this year, a lot more than in Pickett's year, I'll tell you that much. May I interest you in some, Ron? Sure. Folsy, you interested in some quarterbacks? Of course. Uh, there's also the idea of trading somebody like T.J. Watt, I'm trying to get way up in the draft. Anyway. Anywho, uh, the Patriots stupidly won the game last night and may wind up costing themselves Drake May. They're currently slated to take him second. I Marvin, think they still have the second pick do they? as of now. Marvin Harrison Jr. might go back to Ohio State he's because gonna he's going to make NFL money. Going to make so much NFL, I love that. NIL money. <laughs> I love it. Eat that, all you coaches out there who left your teams for greener pastures. And you want to complain? This is the natural evolution of that process now the players are getting paid you like it i do you Ron. know what college is the best time of your life they say i'm sure he doesn't need money you know his father's a hall of famer why not go another year in college now i guess you're running the risk of injury but i'm sure they have insurance policies he's going to make a lot of money if someone had given me 15 million dollars my junior year at Cortland state oh my gosh i think i would have been dead in 10 minutes <laughs> Can you imagine at that age, in a college atmosphere, I really having can't. $15 million? Ron? I can't imagine it. The next quarterback. Oh, do I like him? Woo, do I like Woo, him? Who? Well, well, first of all, it would be Williams May 1 2. That's still regarded as the 1 2. I'm not high on Williams. You don't like him? Uh, not as much as I did last year. Yeah. But I, anyway. I don't think he played as well this year. And, you know, it just struck me as, as wrong, bad, 
and you know, I, I, maybe people will, will laugh at me for saying this. After their third or fourth loss, how many did they lose? He jumped into the stands crying in his mother's arms. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. That bother anybody else? Me, no. Uh, what bothers me is the recklessness in his game that seems to okay. have uh, come up over this year. But it didn't bother anybody else. Not in this room, anyway. It might have bothered a lot of people. I just didn't think it was a good look for him. Anyway, Anywho. He, he was a footnote. Look at who's going 10th. This guy I love, Jaden Daniels. He's 6'4". Oh, yeah. LSU. He is a playmaking machine, man. I've seen a few of LSU's games because they're always on TV. Uh, let's move on from Pickett. I'm sorry. I like Kenny Pickett. You give me Jaden Daniels or Kenny Pickett, are you serious? Right now, if you went into next week with Kenny Pickett or Jaden J- Daniels in the NFL and you asked every coordinator which guy scares you more, 100% of them would say Jaden Daniels. And it wouldn't even yes. be close. I think he's probably going to win the Heisman Trophy. It wouldn't even be matters. close, Ron. Right now in the NFL. Yeah. Sight unseen. You throw him into a game, he would he would provoke more fear in every defense in the league than Kenny Pickett would. I would take him in a second. And you get him maybe with the 10th pick. Start losing. <laughs> Put hey, Trace they, McSorley they, out they there. They may not have start to tank losing. to start losing. True. They're doing a wonderful job. And they could trade. Like, if it's only at 10, and if they're sitting at, what, 18? Yeah. They could trade up to go get him, right? Yes. Although I'd be tempted uh, to take a corner because his name is Kool Aid. Kool Aid McKinstry, Ron, from Alabama. Alabama. Yeah. Just for the name. That's an elite name. Would you? Well, say the name again Kool Aid McKinstry. <laughs> then there's other quarterbacks here. I don't here. know if I want that guy. J.J. McCarthy. Eh. Uh, no, no, no. He's just a, he's a manager to me. Yeah. He beat Penn State without throwing a pass in the second half. They're talking about him in this mock draft on CBS about uh, going 15th to Seattle because Geno Smith has relapsed to his Jets days. Um, that guy doesn't – McCarthy doesn't do much for me. Me neither. Let's see who the next – they have this – Steelers about- taking an offensive tackle from Oregon State. Yeah, they need a, They might need a quarterback here. Michael Penix? Penix isn't on this list, Nene. I'd be interested in him. He, his last couple games, now he won the, won the game, the Pac-12 championship, uh, but his last couple games weren't quite as good. But he was really good that night. I thought he outperformed Bo Nix that night. What right. about Bo Nix? His numbers were staggering too, but yeah, yeah. I say Jaden Daniels. Another guy that's been around forever. Let's right? get Kinda on the, like Pickett that yeah. stayed in college forever. I do like him. I like both those guys. I like Penix. Don't get me wrong. Mel Kuyper, Jaden Daniels, trending toward being a first-rounder. I'm on the Jaden. Can we make a Jaden Daniels train thing? (laughs) Of course we can. Ron, I'm starting to get on this bus here. Uh... Daniels now sits at number four for Kuyper behind Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Dion's kid, uh, Shador Sanders. Uh, I like him. He's coming back, right? He said he's coming back. I don't know. I think he, yeah, said, I think he, he said that, but yeah. man, uh, once guess, they start, well, who knows how much yeah, he's he making. He can make some money too. And he's ahead, Daniels is, of Bo Nix and Michael Penix. There's a strong chance that Sanders will decide to stay in school, which would move Daniels into the top three. Get this kid, Ron. I would think he's going to, uh, Sanders is, he's, his old man's the coach. I think he's going to stay. Daniels, 73% of his passes. That's a, that's a stat. That generally translates to the pros. You're either a high percentage or a low You're percentage accurate. passer. You're accurate. 40 touchdowns and just four interceptions, and he had 1,100 against, yards rushing. Against big time competition. 1,100 yards rushing and 10 touchdowns. Get him. Get him. The here. I'm thinking out loud here, Ron. The worst thing this franchise can do right now is 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 wed itself to Kenny Pickett. The worst thing it can do is wed itself. With, with Kenny Pickett, but wet itself to Kenny Pickett and say, oh, we took him 20th, we got to find out. No, you don't. You don't have to. And I'm not saying that that I'm 100% convinced that Pickett's not the guy. But you're but certainly man, not I'm, convinced that he is. And I'm leaning hard in that direction that he's not. And, I'm yeah, very well put. I'm not convinced at all that he is. Don't get caught in this mistake. Don't compound this mistake. Yep. 
you got to get a guy at the most important position. Start Fire up a Jaden Daniels train. If he's going 10th to 15th, then they can get him. They can get him. I have a feeling he's going to shoot up the, the draft boards. By the time the draft comes around, he might be the first quarterback taken off the board. People are going to just see the sheer numbers he put up and the raw talent there. I know. Just imagine it. Imagine an, an electric performer at that position. Pickett's not electric, Folsey. He's unplugged. I mean, that's that's, <laughs> that's he's, Lamar he's Jackson. Like, he's like a, an uh, Energizer bunny that's been unplugged. Uh, he's just standing there. Right? He may just be a guy who's going to be a, a nice backup. Yes. And make a lot of money and stay healthy. Andy Dalton's ceiling. Dalton had some really good years. But was anybody ever excited about Andy Dalton? No. I think that's Pickett's ceiling. Correct the mistake. Or the correct the possible mistake. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is you have RG3 and Kirk Cousins. You got, the, you got the rookie of the year in RG3 coming back for his second year. You have this other kid, Cousins, who looks like he's really good. The worst that could happen, if you want to call it that, is you have two good NFL quarterbacks you on your always roster. always trade one, too. Yes. The most important position in the sport and maybe in all of sports. Ron, I'm making too much sense here as I, I talk it. out loud. I hate when you make sense, too, because it doesn't happen very rarely. I want to go out and get Jaden Daniels, man.